What's up guys, I want to welcome you to the first full body workout on this channel. Today was a volume day and a lot of good work was done, so let's get right into it. So first here we have the dead stop row, and as you can see the weights on the bar are not very heavy. The last six months I have been progressing on my cheat rows and I switched over from a penlay row to more of a deadlift row and though I do think cheat rows work and I will still use them. Uh, what I was doing was working more on my legs than anything else, so I figured cut back the weight a little bit, work a little bit more on the back, focus on pulling with the back instead of the legs, and see how it goes, and I think it went well. Same thing here with the T-bar row, focusing on that squeeze, building that upper back and the lats, keeping that torso angle more horizontal instead of uh, pretty much vertical with those cheat rows. It's also going to be a lot easier to track this, so Gonna keep it in for a while and see how it goes. I did superset this T-bar row with some axle bench press with a medium grip and that went really well also. Of course, my camera decided not to work so I don't have footage, but I got some rep PRs and everything's moving well on this bulk. So this exercise here, the landmine press, was supersetted with the dead stop rows. And as you can see, this this set is going to go on for a very long time and I decided I would show the whole thing because I do think that occasionally throwing in some uh, extra intensity techniques is very beneficial for building muscle. So I started out and I got 7 reps and I dropped the weight about 20%, got 7 reps again, dropped it 20% again and got 15 reps, then did another little rest pause and did a mechanical drop set and got 15 reps while using some leg drive. and. This was the second set. It really wears you out, but it really pumps up your shoulders, chest, especially the upper chest, and I, I think it went really well. So I don't do these landmine presses too often, and honestly, I'm not a huge fan of them for uh, straight sets. Reason being, it's kind of hard to hold yourself accountable. It's very easy to kind of cheat the motion in order to get some extra reps. As you can see near the end, you can kind of leverage yourself under the bar and this is a way to get more reps with this and it's just a little bit harder to track so straight sets uh, I personally don't think it works as well that's why I usually do it with something like this with a drop set where it doesn't really matter as much because you're just really pumping the blood and the muscles getting a lot of volume in in a short time and this works really well for it so as you can see starting to get tired here uh, on the first of the last weight and at this point all the muscles are burning and you just got to keep going sometimes you just got to push through it and keep going if you really want to build those muscles so this goes on for a while and while you watch this i might take a chance to explain how the full body workouts usually work so on my volume days i usually start with a press and a pull superset and then i do a different press and pull superset usually do about three sets each three to five depending uh, and then I'll hit legs with some kind of exercise, usually pretty high volume there too, and I like to do that near the beginning of the workout because uh, I've done it at the end in the past, and honestly I just don't have the energy at that point, I'm pretty drained, so keep it near the beginning. And that's been working really well. And after that I have some accessories for the shoulders and the arms and the forearms, and then I have abs and neck. And I also do uh, a couple band circuits. In between, uh, in between exercises. I'm not a huge fan of resting for a long time, though I know it is necessary if you want to lift the most weight possible. So between something like deadlifts or my, my leg exercises that take uh, a lot out of you, um, I like to throw those band exercises in just to get some extra blood in the muscles, keep the joints feeling good, and just get some extra volume. So here you can see I have the high rep, high handle trap bar deadlift off of probably about a half inch block. Uh, I just have a few pads down so I don't ruin my floor. And I got 10 reps here, did three sets of it. This is the last one. And I have to say, for a long time, I hadn't done more than maybe three reps, if I'm being honest, on my deadlifts of any kind. And when I started doing these high volume st uh, sets, like I was worn out quick. It, it hits you hard. And even with a generally high work capacity, I do a lot of work, it just wears you out. But after a few months of doing these high reps, I'm uh, really starting to get up there in the weight again. And honestly, the, uh, the weight I'm doing for sets of 10 is 
creeping pretty high, getting close to the weight I would use for uh, lower set reps, which is kind of weird. I don't know if I'm just built for high rep sets or if that's just how it goes, but it's going well. So here you can see the first of the band stuff. That's the face pull. Then I have the push downs. Finally, you'll see the curls. And on this day, I just did this stuff between my sets of deadlifts. Just to, I don't like to stop. I just like to keep going. And it's, it's just a way to get more volume. And my joints feel great um, despite doing extensions and curls and everything all the time. So I think it's worth it. And here we have the side lateral raises with the 35s. I think I got 26 reps here, though I did cut the uh, clip short for all these accessories because it's kind of boring and it goes on forever. Just getting some volume in there, not the strongest with that, but I do it anyway. Uh, trying to increase with reps on that. And then here I have the uh, close grip facing outward with the Swiss bar curls. And I have about 10 exercises for uh, biceps and triceps that I kind of rotate. I'll just look back in my log and see what I haven't done in a while and I'll try to hit a rep PR and did it today too and that's going well. Here we have the band oblique crunch. Honestly, if you've never done these, it's my favorite way to hit the obliques. It's It just feels really great. You want to keep your bottom hand in the band and then put your other hand on top of your bottom hand and it's it just works really well. It kind of connects your obliques and your lats and uh, you get a really good contraction. So I recommend it for anyone. And then here we have the Swiss Bar Medium Grip JM Press. And this, honestly, I'm not trying to get too much weight on this. The range of motion is kind of extreme and it does put your elbows in a little bit of a compromising position, but it does build those tendons really well. And I've seen some great carryover to pressing in general from these. So I'm gonna keep doing them, keep them in my rotation. Then we got the band crunch, and I do these every single time I train. I definitely recommend it. I have never seen my abs at such a high body fat, and I, I think that the band crunches are, are definitely helping with that. So here we have the axle bar holds. Uh, just progressing with three sets on this, so I got 30 seconds, 25 seconds, 20 seconds with this weight, and once I'm able to do three sets with the short rest in between, I'll just increase the weight and progress that way. Ended with some neck curls, neck extensions, and neck side work. And that's pretty much the workout. You gotta, gotta do the neck. It's really important. It'll make you look a lot different. So hope you enjoyed the workout, and I'll see you next time.